part of the Press Play Podcast Network. This 2023 Summer Recap episode of the Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. NFL is here, y'all, and that means it's time to download your favorite sportsbook app to make your football watching experience even better. It's been a long seven months, but the wait is over. The NFL is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you a can't-miss offer for week one. This week, new customers can get $200 in bonus best instantly when you bet just $5 on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you can get. For week one, I've got a tasty three-game parlay with the Ravens over the Texans, the Jags over the Colts, and the Eagles over the Patriots, basically going against rookie QBs, and I'm pretty bullish on the Eagles this year. You can also join our P3 betting group to keep up with all of our action. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code P3CAVS. Again, that's P3CAVS to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting 5 bucks. That's code P3CAVS. Again, P3CAVS only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, which is 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility. Terms and responsible gaming resources apply. Bonus bets expire seven days after assurance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Iguodala to Curry, back to Iguodala, up for the layup, oh, blocked by James! It's over, it's over! Cleveland is a city of champions once again! The Cavaliers are NBA champions! What's good, Breakers? That sound means it's time for Cavs on the Break NBA podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. I'm your host, Chase Smith, and with me, he's the NBA writer and founder of hoopswire.com. He's our Cavs insider, national NBA writer, Sam Amico. Sam, how was your summer? We haven't talked in a while, buddy. Yeah, it's been real good. Um, you know, pretty relaxing. Not a whole lot going on. Got a kid off the college. Uh, other than that, you know, pretty, pretty chill. Well done. Well done. We haven't recorded a podcast in a while. And joining us on the other line, John Sable. Sports at Fox 8, host of Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast right here in the Press Play Podcast Network. John, one of the sad things about the Cavs losing to the Knicks is that we didn't get to record as many podcasts as we wanted to together. I've missed you this summer, Sable. I know, man. It's It's been a uh, quiet summer for us. Uh, not so quiet for the Cavs. They were busy, but you know we're back together, and this is just one of many, many more to come here in the next like nine months. Yes, yes. We cannot wait to bring you all the latest, the greatest Cavs news on the best Cavs podcast available. Sam, one of the things that we've been joking about is uh, Sam's going to reclaim the rock here this season. And uh, you've been texting emphatically that um, you're just going to take back Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Sam, are you excited to go to every game and to see all these practices? Is, is this the year of Amico? <laughs> well, yes, I will say I'm back on the beat uh, because I think it really, you know, our, our Cavs coverage, probably the last three months of the season, even the playoffs and then the postseason has been very well received by the readers at Hoopswire. So it, it makes sense for me to go back uh, to the practices and back to all the games and, you know, probably up to Detroit and stuff, too. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited, very much looking forward to it. Um, it, 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 it'll take me back to my younger days, you know, six, seven, eight years ago when I had been doing this before. So I, I I'm very excited to be going to be around the team a, a lot more now. And we're excited for you and we're excited for what that means for the podcast. That means, uh, you're going to be offering insights 
uh, that only people who see the team every day can can kind of share. Um, I'm not going to be joining you every game or every practice, but I'm going to be excited to get up there with you, hang out, be the games, check out a practice or two. And so Sam, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be good to see you re- reclaim the rock. Um, one of the things I want to do in this episode, fellas, is just kind of bring us up to speed on Cavs on the summer break. All right. So we haven't recorded a podcast at all since our uh, let down of a playoff appearance against the Knicks uh, and how we were just ran off the court pretty much every game except for the blowout win we had in Cleveland. And so there's been a couple of things that we can talk about. And the first thing I want to talk about are just, it was the beginning of the summer. It was in the middle of no sporting news. And all of a sudden the Cavs and Donovan Mitchell find themselves leading sports talk shows being talked about on sports center and it's trending. And all of a sudden, wait a second, is Donovan Mitchell going to sign an extension with the Cavs? Sam, let's start with you. Okay, where there's smoke, there's fire. Is this something that we should be worried about that we might not see Mitchell finish this upcoming season in a Cavs uniform? This is his final season. I I, contract. Where where are we at with this? This was a rumor that Cavs not not going to extend Mitchell or they're not going to agree. What is going on? Okay, well, let me start here. Those coming out of New York. That started out of New York, which, of course, is where he's from, which, of course, when something's reported out of the media capital of the world, it becomes bigger news than it probably should be. I personally think it's too early to start talking about that because, really, it's next summer where he if he were to sign one this year or this summer, it would be really shocking. It just doesn't work like that in the NBA. Next summer's the year that you're like. Okay, is he going to sign an extension or not? And even if he doesn't, you still have him obviously for the following season. So okay, so I was wrong. He, we have two more seasons of Mitchell's contract. I I was yes, wrong. I was right. wrong. I was wrong. Right. Okay, but no, but you're right to say that. Yeah, there was a lot of buzz about it now, which was, was surprising to me. It's it's too early to to for as much buzz as this has gotten or got. Like you said earlier this summer, it's yeah. died down now, but. You know, I, you've got to wait. We we all have to wait to see how this season plays out. You know, I think that that's you can't if you're Donovan Mitchell, and I don't think Donovan Mitchell's thinking anything but let's see how this season plays out, and you know whether or not this is something I want to be part of long term. Right now, you know, other other than New York, I don't see a place where he would want to go. You know, because he's got such a young core, he's. He's obviously the number one option with the Cavs, and they've got a lot of promise. So, Chase, I'll say this. The one thing I liked about Donovan Mitchell when he was in Utah, when they were gutting that roster last summer, he made it clear. Hey, go ahead and gut the team around me. I'm here. I'm under contract. I'm yeah. here. I, I have no problem staying. So I think it's way too soon to have that conversation, even though people started it before we did. I, I just think you have to wait and see how this season plays out. Uh, because I I really believe that's what he's thinking. Yeah, John, I'll throw it to you in a moment. But, I, I I think I, yeah. I was thinking that uh, if he has one year at that point, the Cavs would pretty much know if he's resigning, so they might try to move him with that, you know, expiring for some picks, and so try to you know maybe CYA myself a little bit there. John, were you surprised to hear some of those rumors that early? No, I wasn't, and here's why: because the reason why those rumors came out was because well, a lot of the rumors came out was because it was. Donovan Mitchell, who brought it up, he brought it up immediately last year, a year ago. It will be a year ago this coming uh, end of September on the 26th when we were there, when he brought up the trade that fell through with the Knicks. And then he brought it up again during the Knicks series um, and about playing at Madison Square Garden. So it really, he fueled the own, the, the rumor itself. And during I think that the, time. the Guardians played and the so, Mets too, right? It was like a Mets Guardians thing. Yeah, and that we could address that here for a second because I think that's actually completely irrelevant. Because Donovan's, I think, dad works for the Mets or is a family member. Yes. I can't remember the exact connection. Dad. He has a family member. I think it's his dad. It might works for it the is. Mets. It's his dad. It's his childhood. Okay, his dad. So it's his childhood favorite team. 
Um, he loves baseball. So, you know, he's going to be going to Guardian. He went to Guardians games when, they're, when the Mets were playing or was in New York when the Mets were playing. And, you know, he, he, I don't think that's it. that's that's a sign that he's going to the Knicks. It's him being a fan. Everyone tried to connect the dots, which I think there was no dots to connect there. I think that was a major yeah. reach. The issue, though, is him bringing up the – like, no one asked him the question. I remember, Sam, we were in the, in the press conference room after the game. You know, he brought it up. He brought up, like, playing in the garden and, and almost getting traded there again. When it's like, well, why are you bringing this up now? And that's continuing to refuel and rekindle those trade rumors. So, partially, he's the one to blame for that, in my opinion. And I like Donovan Mitchell. I do. I just think that's part of the reason why – we heard those rumors and continue to hear them, but even though right now the we don't hear as much because there's not much going on in the league. Yeah, you know, I think it was a perfect storm of, you know, not a lot of sports news going on, and you know, Mitchell uh, maybe stirring the pot just a little bit. Uh, I I don't think this is anything that the Cleveland fans are surprised by. I mean, when LeBron won his title with the Cavs, they're in, like. Almost a week later, hey, LeBron's going to leave. Like that was the rumor. Kyrie's going to leave. It's just like not a lot of time just to rest and and what we have. And so I think these rumors and speculations of star players, for some reason, it's just like how soon can they get out of Cleveland? Um, I think it's got to wear on the team, wear on on the players a little bit, just in the back of their minds. Um, so ultimately, it leads to this question, John: Will Donovan Mitchell end his career in Cleveland? As we sit here right now, I say no. I still yeah, think it's I, early, I like Sam says, but I, I think no. Yeah, I don't think so either. Sam, what what say ye? Uh, well, it's hard for me to predict that somebody's going to end their career with the same team in today's day and age when they're a superstar player. Because, you know, other than like Steph Curry, who else is, you know, Durant moves around, LeBron's moved around. But it's a great uh, podcast question. No, it's a great question, but yeah, I would. Uh, so, I mean, based on everything else you see, I would say no, because I mean, now look, Damian Lillard was probably the most loyal guy ever to the trailblazers. And now he's, you know, he wants out. So I, I just, I don't foresee star players. We seem to live in an age of chronic dissatisfaction <laughs> where, you know, everybody wants to go to the new team. And, and this is a whole nother podcast. I think we discussed this off the, off the uh, air at one point was, you know, how, how many more titles would LeBron and Kyrie have had they just stayed with the Cavs? You know, yeah. I, I think they'd each, I think they'd, I think the Cavs probably would have won a couple more actually. I agree. So, so, you know, it's not always great. The grass isn't always greener, but that doesn't keep guys from, from moving on. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're going to move on from this. Hey, I would agree hundred percent on that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, moving on from this D Mitch story, because we got a c- couple things to get caught up on here. There was an NBA draft w- with, with one of the highest prospects in recent memory, Victor Wimbanyana to the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, real quick, Sam, are you excited ab- about him landing there? Was that like, are you okay with that? He's in the West with pop have, has yeah. some like legacy, you know, narratives there. Yeah, I thought it was a lot better situation for him than, say, like Detroit or, (laughs) you know, some of those other situations. And that's, you know, it's because the Spurs do have some tradition. They have the same coach that, you know, won championships, coach Tim Duncan. I think that's a good spot for a guy. I think it really, really lessens the potential for him to be a bust because he's in San Antonio, because he's got a good... They have a good culture, even though they haven't been winning a lot lately. It's a good culture and should be a good situation for him with Popovich. And then whoever Popovich's successor is, is going to be somebody from the Spurs family tree. So, uh, or, or potentially Steve Kerr, who, of course, was, you know, a coach there for a player there for a while. So I, I like that for Wembenyana. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Sable, are you happy with a Wimbanyana sweepstakes outcome? I think, yeah, I think the Spurs, um, when you look at it, the, the Spurs franchise just in general have gotten real lucky. Tim Duncan, um, 
Manu Ginobili, you know, just the, the list goes on. Tony Parker, David Robinson over those years. I know, uh, you know, Duncan was the number one pick and, you know, those other guys were, were sleepers. So I guess the, the luck really could fall in their favor when you have guys that were under the radar, like um, Ginobili and the Tony Parker, but it just goes to show how phenomenal that franchise is. Um, and I agree with Sam, he could not have landed in a better yeah. Um, franchise at the moment to develop him and with Pop. I just wonder how long, how much longer Pop wants to coach. Um, is he going to be there in five years when, you know, Victor Wembanyama, if he goes on that trajectory where we all think he's going to be, is going to be a top five NBA player? Um, I'd like to see how much, um, how much of an impact he'll have on him, but when and where uh, he, he retires, if that's going to impact uh, Wembanyama's development. I was excited. He Wimignon is not in the East. He's not in the dumpster fire. That's the Hornets. And unfortunately, Chris, he's definitely not in Detroit. Our unofficial Cavs on the break Detroit correspondent, uh, Chris. Uh, and he's not in Houston. So it, in my opinion, it's like a win, 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 win. Like, it's just like if you're yeah. a, a Cavs fan, like, and you don't mind a little bit of like Spurs kind of, you know, death taxes and Spurs, then, then that's... Uh, Kind of works out well. Well, the Cavs did not have a first round pick. They traded it for uh I think that was included in the Deshaun Watson deal with the Browns and all, all that to uh the Texans. <laughs> um, but uh they did get a couple picks in the second round. A, a couple exciting players, possibly Craig Porter Jr. and Imani Bates, uh, who showed out in in summer league. Sam, tell us a little bit about, about Bates and Porter Jr. What what are the Cavs hoping out of these two picks? We're gonna see them um on the hard world uh in a Cavs uniform this season? I think I think Bates has a better shot, although now with the Ricky Rubio situation, you know, the Cavs are going to need a backup point guard uh, from time to time. Obviously, Ty Jerome could handle that. Sam Morrell can handle it a little bit. But I think that improves Porter Jr.'s chances of playing <clears throat> with the Cavs as opposed to just with the charge. Um, and he, he really looked good during summer league. I mean, very steady. Both of them uh, did. Very, yeah, both of them did. But just sticking with Porter Jr., so, yeah. I was surprised at how well he just managed the team and ran the team. And I was very, very impressed with him. Bates, I'll tell you this, this that was that was the guy I was hoping the Cavs would take if he was there, still there, hmm. um, at number 49. I was I I thought that was a great pick because obviously second round pick, you know. You don't have to have a ton of pressure on you. There aren't super high expectations right now. And I mean, you're talking about a kid who was, you know, once called the next Kevin Durant. And you can see why, because he's got that length. He shoots. Obviously, his issue has been consistency. Um, while he was at Eastern Michigan, you know, he transferred from Memphis, went to Eastern Michigan. I, I saw them play Akron. I think he had four or six points against Akron and he looked disinterested and then a couple nights later he looked real interested I think it was against Buffalo I'm not quite sure maybe it was Toledo whoever but he had like 42 points mm. so the talent and the ability is there he's just you know it's been a rocky road for him basketball wise consistency wise um and, and in terms of you know but now you're in the NBA you I don't think that's going to be a question anymore. I think that the effort's going to be there and who knows. You know, maybe this this kid really turns into something. Um but the jury's obviously still out on on what he's going to do on a night-to-night -night basis. Is he going to be, you know, obviously he signed a two-way contract, is that how he's going to spend the season or is he going to work his way into a standard contract and be a part of the rotation if not this season the next? That's what the Cavs are hoping for for him. They're hoping that they got an absolute steal. And of all the guys in the second round, this is the guy everybody has pegged yep. as a potential steal. Yep, yep. And and John, really, that's what you're looking for in the second round is all upside guys. Uh, if you're looking for contributors in the second round, that's probably not voting well for your team. Um, but it seems like the Cavs are building through the draft in a healthy way. And they got looks like some really good prospects there in, in Bates and Porter Jr. 
Yeah, it's actually the I got to admit this is the this past summer the Cavs summer league is probably the first time ever that I've watched every single Cavs summer league game ever. Even like the LeBron year when he was a rookie that summer, that was the, when the summer league wasn't even on TV all the time. They had maybe had one or two games on because they had the summer league in Florida and then they had the one in Vegas. Um anyways, watching those games, you really saw this kid kind of develop quickly. And you saw his confidence build. And that was the big knock on him was the mental part of the game for him. And so uh, that was one of the things that he struggled with when he was at Memphis and Eastern Michigan. And I think that's the one thing the Cavs are going to really keep their close eyes to just because of of uh, just his background. And he's been open about it. Um, and, you know, he's really been uh, a, a pleasant surprise so far. Now, the season hasn't started yet. And we'll see if he can make that roster, like Sam said. But uh, what a pleasant surprise um, in the second round. And, you know, if you find someone like that that can contribute, that's great. Because typically nowadays you see in the NBA, second round draft picks don't typically amount to much, if not a third option on the bench, if at all. Yep. Um, well, let's talk about Summer League, even though we haven't hit on free agency yet, um, because I, I do want to talk about the Summer League. The, the Cavs were Summer League champs. They went six and zero. Oh, they beat the Rockets in the final game, and and fellas, we, we we had a squad. We had a squad. Sam Merrill, twenty seven points in the ship. Uh, Bates dropped nineteen five and four. Isaiah Mobley, the MVP, twenty eight eleven and two blocks. The the Cavs summer summer league. Don't don't mess the, with the Cavs, man. Fear the sword. Let's go, Sam. <laughs> summer league chance. Print the T shirts. Hang the banner. Where's my ring? Let's go. I think they they got rings, right? I think they, they did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they got they got rings and merch. They got t-shirts and hats. Can we just talk about how big of a joke that is though? Come on. Let's oh, go. boo. Boo, John boo. <laughs> John would be in favor if we got Cavs on the Break podcast t-shirts, hats and rings. Hey. He'd be all excited, he right? Would. Yeah. I mean, it's He'd different. Wear it under it's his different. suits it's with you news. guys. <laughs> wear it under a suit just for us just so we know but no one else knows why wouldn't they put this like one banner it's like summer league and they just like all the years that they won why why not what's wrong with that put that banner in the practice facility has no, no business being in, in the arena that's like when teams put their wild card banners down silly it's like division division champs yeah well div- division champs is okay i guess you know, conference champs, fine. But the, the, the summer league, no one cares. Disagree. I disagree. It At speaks to the organization. Rate. Yeah, Sam. Yeah. Now, this is good I, podcasting right here. Talking I, about I, the. <laughs> I'm up in the air on that. I, I think if, you know, I could see where you would you would really want to celebrate it. But I don't think there should be a banner involved. I'm fine. I, I'm even okay with uh, like the hat and the shirt and stuff. Um, I'm fine. But I, I mean, it's like winning, you know, spring training or something. It's yeah. Or, it's it, a great it, analogy. Was also, it was like the Ravens unbeaten streak in the preseason. <laughs> you know, I was just so, going to bring that up. I was just going to bring yeah. that up. Sam, do you think the Ravens have that banner at, at whatever uh, MTMP bank stadium or whatever it's called now, bro. If they had no, a but I, in the NFL for the preseason, that thing would make money, no, have ratings no, and they sure. would celebrate with confetti and it would be a thing. Don't even act like it wouldn't be, you know, you know, what's with, funny is you, three NFL players on the team though. Just saying <laughs> do you, do you, you talk about like a point like we're, we're going down a path here. And I just got to say one thing, Chase, do you guys remember any any Cavs fans listening to this, I'm assuming are Browns fans, and they'll remember this. But let's see if you two remember this. The the Browns and the Lions used to always play in preseason for like a five or six year stretch. Do you remember that? Trophy. Like, that yeah, trophy. I do. You, and yeah. do you remember what the trophy was? Yeah, the Battle of the Barge. Battle of the Barge. Yeah. And but do you remember what they called the game? They gave the game a title. I don't remember the no. title of the game. It was called the Great Lakes Classic. Oh, yeah. I like that. And I, and I think the Browns were the last team to win that. They were. And as far as I know, I had heard someone when I was when I was in Berea at the facility recently, I brought it up to somebody, and no one knows where that barge is. You know, John, I used to host a Browns podcast. I know you. And, I, that's why I was hoping you'd remember. You cannot you'd confirm or deny that. 
it is in the orange is orange of possession. The bar really? trip. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeremy has it in his shop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, no well, dude. I, I love I, I'm all for the summer camp tournament. That is awesome. Are you kidding me? Get these. All right. Yes, I, I am I am all the accolades, all the exposure. Yes, let's let's do it. I, I is it I'm, I'm is there. it any surprise that podcast hype man Chase <laughs> is in favor of Chase? I bet you'd be okay if they gave like t shirts and hats for every game if they won. No, not every game. <laughs> if there is a bracket won't... in a tournament and they have to play teams who have like advanced, I, I want to celebrate that. Let's do so it. So will you celebrate? Will you celebrate if they win the in season tournament? Uh, probably not because it's not a final tournament. Like, there's no well, finality to it. Okay. A at any rate, I did really like what I saw from obviously yes. Bates and Porter <laughs> Jr. But I really liked what I saw from Merrill. I just thought if he can hit shots like that, he could be a valuable piece and add to their goal, which mm -hmm. we have yet to discuss, of going out and getting perimeter shooting. So yes, I, I like that. I really liked what I saw from Merrill and obviously Bates and uh, uh, Porter Jr. as well. Yeah, I, I yes. felt... Yeah. Sorry, John, one moment. I felt similarly about Isaiah Mobley. I think the Cavs lacked yes. a little depth behind Allen and, and his brother Isaiah. Um, I think that was evident in the playoffs as well. And and that kind of aggressiveness that he showed is, I think is what the Cavs need. I don't know if it's enough to find himself in a regular rotation, but it's definitely a progress in the right direction, John. I would agree with both you guys. Uh, first off, Sam Merrill, I thought had a great summer league. He really kind of opened my eyes a little bit. His shooting was lights out. Um, Isaiah Mobley got overshadowed, I think by Amani Bates, but it doesn't mean that he didn't have a great summer league. I thought, he, there were times there where he took over a game and was that leader on the floor, the vocal yeah. leader. Um, and uh, I thought that was a, a good compliment to, to Bates. There were times when Bates would come up to Isaiah and would ask him things, and, and Isaiah's kind of showing him where to go, which is, if you're the Cavs, you'd love to see that. And, and the depth part, and this is a conversation we'll have up until we got media day here in a month, but uh, I think Isaiah Mobley has kind of solidified himself on this roster, in my opinion. I'd be shocked if he's not on the Cavs roster now, especially with Lamar Stevens gone. Cavs are lacking depth at yeah. the big, so you need Mobley in there. Sam, did uh, Mobley work himself into some r real minutes here during the season? Well, I think he's going to have to continue what he started in, in summer league in training camp, and then if he does that, sure, he'll get – He'll get some time, like John said, you know, without Lamar Stevens, um, obviously not that Chase favorite Robin Lopez played a lot, but Ugh, don't get me he started. Did, he did, it's he late did. and I'm already sleep deprived. <laughs> he did. He did. You know, at the beginning of the season, obviously Lopez played a little bit. And so, I mean, there's going to be some minutes there. Obviously the, the Cavs went out and got um, to Damian Damian Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh, Center. Yeah. So the jazz. Yeah. And he's kind of a, he he's, he's kind of like a poor man's JaVel McGee, you know, very athletic and, and can get up and down the court and finish at the rim. So that, um, I don't know who that's consulting more to JaVel McGee or, or, <laughs> well, or Damian well, I mean, Jones. Put it this way. He's he's not a super skilled guy, but he's very athletic and has size, and I think he's gonna he'll be able to play a little bit. Um, so those, he'll 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 definitely get some backup minutes, I would think, Jones. So yeah, I mean Mobley, Isaiah Mobley offered some things that were very promising in summer league, and uh, you know he's he comes from a good basketball family. He's not as athletic as Evan, but he's he's very skilled and and very fundamentally sound, and I think that. You know, the Cavs could certainly use some of that in the front court, but it's all going to come down to, you know, training camp and those type of things as to whether or not uh, guys like Merrill, Isaiah Mobley and Bates, you know, whether they're whether they're getting minutes early because you got a pretty good starting five. And then you added free agent pieces that we haven't yet talked about that are pretty good. and They're supposed to come in and play a lot. So there's yeah. only so many minutes to go around. John, I'm I'm looking at this Cavs team. They're young. They swept the summer league. 
They seem to have a promising young core. I think there's a, and we talked about this the last year, like a correlation between the Cavs team and this Guardians team. Do you see that well, at all? I, I see you have a lot of young guys and and some players and some pieces there that probably weren't you know expected to do much on the Guardian side that did a lot last year and then this year they're kind of you know maybe overachieved last year and then now they're back to earth and a lot of injuries happen. I think the correlation that I see with the with the Cavs side of that is, uh, yeah, I think the Cavs. I don't think necessarily think they overachieved last year. I think they they hit a. Um, I don't think they hit a ceiling, but they hit a level of expectations that fans and media members like to see, but gave a taste, a bad taste in the mouth of the, as the exit of the playoffs, the way they did, but it's leaving fans want more kind of like with the guardians left last year where fans wanting more, unfortunately so far it's a letdown and, and it's going to be a letdown because they're not going to the playoffs. Uh. But for the Cavs now expectations are even higher. So hunger from the fan base, there's a hunger from the organization and the expectations that Kobe Altman said in media day last year, it said, we're not putting any expectations on this team. You know, if the playoffs happen, great, but you know, that's not the end all be all, which people the wrong way. But he said that because he's putting less pressure on his team that was young and inexperienced with, uh, you know, the roster, the way it was set up. I'm interested to hear, hear what he has to say now, because now there has to be an expectation because a first round exit is not going to be acceptable. And if you do a first round exit, there's going to be some changes. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot, I think this team is still missing something though. And we could talk about throughout the year, but I feel like the, the roster is still incomplete in some way, in some ways. I think they're saving a spot for me. It's yeah. You know, they are Chase Smith I, I think, piece that they're missing. <laughs> I think the pieces they made in free agency were good. I feel like there's something missing. I can't, you know, I don't know. I think they got their wing. Um, you know, they got the they, the pieces that they added were great. I just feel like there's something else here, uh, and maybe the pieces there just hasn't developed yet. We still need to see this team in action. What do you think, Sam? Well, I think Evan Mobley. You know, you're counting on him to take that kind of that year three leap, um, yep. and 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 be better. And it, look, he was good last year. He's been great defensively. Offensively, he seemed to. You know, after, okay, so the first, when he was a rookie, his first, you know, half of the season was fantastic. And then he kind of, people hate it in the NBA when you say rookie wall, but that's exactly what he hit as a rookie. And then he kind of broke through it a little bit. And then last year, I felt like he was, had to adjust. I think it was the biggest adjustment for him to have Donovan Mitchell on the team. Um, not, Not in a bad way, but it just took, Evan Mobley, like, okay, this guy's really dynamic. How do I fit in as a young guy? That's hard to figure out sometimes, you know, but I think in the second half of last season, Mobley got it figured out and, you know, showed signs of, yeah, he's going to be something special. I just think that he's going to have to take that next step this year. Uh, And I, I have every, you know, from a fan standpoint, you would think that, you'd have every bit of confidence that that's exactly what he's going to do. And it's not a huge leap. He just has to take that next step this year. And I think if he does that and he gets comfortable playing with Mitchell and Garland, which he seems to be now, but he has to get more comfortable. uh, I I, I think that there's going to be a big, that may be the piece that you're talking about, John. Yeah, I I think you're right. And, And I think we were waiting for that leap last year. It really didn't happen until later in the year. We just now need to see it at a consistent clip because everyone has compared him to those Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett, um, mm-hmm. because he has that frame. He just needs to get that shooting and needs to be more physical. Those are the two biggest parts of his game that needed to be improved. And let's see what he's done in the offseason and if it happens. And it needs to be on a consistent clip because if he can, then this team is gonna is just going to take off. I think that's what I mean. I, I don't necessarily think it's a roster spot, I guess. I think it just need, needs to see more development and refining on a young guy that is loaded with talent. Yeah. Right. You, you know what they're missing, John? Amico on the beat is what they're missing. <laughs> That's they're getting, right. The key to success. They're I will getting say, that back, though. I will say, when Le- my, my first year on the beat, first, well, what, three or four years, I think Jason Lloyd and I decided we were the two losingest beat writers in the NBA <laughs> because – 
it was immediately after LeBron left. And um, yeah, yeah, we were, we were way up there in terms of losses. So, so hopefully, you know, it'll go different this time around, but I will say, you know, I think they addressed most of their, what they were looking to add. They, I th- I really like what Kobe Altman did this off season. I, I always like his moves. Sometimes they don't work out, but I think the guy has made moves that the fans say, Oh, we got to add some outside shooting, you know, and, and they went out and got it. So yeah. I think, I think Kobe Altman's done a nice job when it comes to making moves. And, you know, it's last week was, was a year ago today that he made the trade for Donovan Mitchell. So I, I, I really like what they've done with this roster, adding pieces to it. And, uh, you know, if you just hope you grow organically, you know, with the guys that are already on the team that now have playoff experience, yeah, they could look the Miami Heat. This isn't a shot at them, but look how they got to the finals last year. I just think it's wide open in the Eastern Conference. And I think the Cavs are definitely in that conversation yep. as a team that could come out of it. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and whenever we come back, we're going to talk about those additions the Cavs made. We're going to touch on the FIBA World Cup, and then uh, we're going to you know, let you guys go. So stick around. Cavs on the break. NBA podcast. We'll be right back. Hi, everybody. It's John Tellich from the Guardians of the Land MLB podcast. Be sure to hop on with us to follow all the dramatic developments of the reigning American League Central Division champions. From game analysis, to interviews, to keeping tabs on who could be the next breakout star. We'll have that and much, much more right here. It's the Guardians of the Land MLB podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. Subscribe here and join the fun. What's up, everyone? I'm Holly Wetzel. And I'm Tigers Powell. And we are your hosts of the Orange is Orange, a Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. We give you all the dog pound coverage that you'll need to get you through the regular season, hopeful postseason, and I'd say off-season, Tyvis, but is there really ever an off-season for this team? Thankfully for our podcast, Holly, there really never is when it comes to the Cleveland Browns. Don't miss our breakdown of each week's matchup, game recaps, and any and all news out of Berea to feed your Browns appetite. As we know, Holly, dogs gotta eat. Yes, they do. So hit that subscribe button and never miss an episode of the Orange is Orange Cleveland Browns podcast on the Press Play Podcast Network. Looking for new insights on the Cleveland sports scene with a unique side of Cleveland sports history? Then you found the perfect podcast. I'm John Sable. And I'm Scott Sable, and we're hosts of the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, a podcast about Cleveland sports, but not your typical podcast about the land's sports teams. Join us as we embark on a journey of sharing a unique and historical side of Cleveland sports history with the help of some former Cleveland sports stars and other historical figures. All right here on the Sable Brothers on the Baseline podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. The r and Podcast going to be rocking and rolling with you because football season is underway. College, Ohio State, the Power Fives, the Mac, the Browns. Michael Regai, are you ready to rock and roll with some football? Kenny, I've been ready. This is our time of year. This is what r and is all about. We're going to be with you every week. Kenny just said it, Browns, NFL, Ohio State-centric. So you got to stay with us all fall and winter long here on r and r That's right. The Red Eye and Rhoda podcast coming to you here on the Press Play Podcast Network. Subscribe now and don't miss a show. Hey, I'm Jason. And I'm Gary. And And we we love love ball cards. And if you love ball cards too, good news. You just found your new favorite podcast. From breaks to grading. And from collecting to flipping, join us on the Ball Cards Show. The sports podcast for the sports collector. All right, we are back. Cavs on the break. NBA podcast. Sam Amico, John Sable. Uh, Sam was just raving about the pieces that Kobe Altman has made here during the summer in free agency. Here are the players that we have acquired or that are in. Well, first off, we resigned Karis LeVert. Secondly, uh, we uh, we got Georges Niang, a um, outside specialist from the 76ers, three-year, 
25.5 million contract. We traded for guard forward Max Strauss from the Heat. We got guard Ty Jerome from the Golden State Warriors and Damian Jones, as mentioned, from the Jazz. They're out. We traded Chetty Osman. Uh, Ricky Rubio is stepping out, um, focusing on his mental health. Lamar Stevens was traded to the Spurs, who has since been waived. Am I missing anything? Chetty. Chetty was no, traded. You said Chetty. Oh, okay. I I I was uh, so enraptured that I I must have missed him saying Chetty in there. Yeah. Um. You know, addressing shooting forwards and center depth. Um. Sam, which is your favorite move of of the ones that are in with resigning Levert, Niang, Strauss, and uh, Jerome? Uh, Damian Jones, you missed. That was the other one. No. Okay. I I, th- I think he said that from the Jazz. Okay. You cut out on my end. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. I just stopped listening. No, I'm kidding. Um, That's fair. I would say, I would say, I, I, I mean, I like them all. I, 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 it's hard to pick a favorite, but, you know, I think that re-signing Levert, even though people find him inconsistent or he's been inconsistent at times, I thought he would played well. He was one of the few people you could say played pretty well against the Knicks. Um, but I like the idea of continuity. You know, yes. and a guy who who really kind of, you know, toward the end of the year had really earned that starting small forward spot, even though he's coming off the bench a lot. He was playing the best on the team at that position. Um, I think it took a little while for him to get readjusted. J.B. Bickerstaff would say all the time at the beginning of the season, we're asking Karras to be more of a facilitator. And, you know, that was a different role from when he first got to Cleveland so I, I I liked the liked the idea that I wouldn't have been as high on the Struce move and the Nyang move if they hadn't brought back Lavert. I think that that so so I think that bringing back Lavert was key, and that'll you know it just makes them deeper along with with Struce and Nyang. And I tell you what. Kind of like Ty Jerome. I think that could be an underrated move. I mean, the guy scored 22 in Cleveland last year with the Warriors. Uh, when when they came in, the Warriors came into Cleveland without Steph Curry and Draymond Green and beat the Cavs. Um, and Ty Jerome was a big reason why. So, again, and not to mention a guy who can play the backup point guard spot that they're going to need right now. So, I liked I liked them all, but I it started to me or for me it started with Levert. Like you you get him back, good price, reasonable price, and you know you keep your continuity going. I think there's a lot to be said for that. John, what's your favorite move? Uh, I did the uh, Ty Jerome point. I was you stole my thunder, Sam. I was going to say the exact same thing. That, that kid is underrated. I remember um, watching him at Virginia, yeah. and uh, just just seeing him kind of blow up there in the in the tournament and things. I really liked his game. I, I don't think he – I know he's bounced around a little bit. I, I hope uh, the Cavs can utilize him in that backup point guard role. Um, you know, for me, you know, besides Ty Jerome as the underlying underrated fat, uh, player that was the, the uh, addition side, uh, I really like the George Niang signing. Um, I think he can give you kind of some depth on, on the wing a little bit. Uh, but I also think – Having Karis LeVert and, and having um, guys that can penetrate can can stretch the f- floor a little bit for him. Um, I, I've never met the guy yet, but I've heard many interviews with him, and he is going to become a Cavs fan favorite. He is very outgoing. He has a fun personality, and I think Cavs fans are going to gravitate towards him once they kind of get to know him. And uh, he's just kind of like one of the boys. He's kind of a guy you'd like to have to go have a beer with. And so – um, I think he's very relatable to Cleveland or a Midwest lifestyle. I know he went to school at Iowa State, um, but that is something to look out for. Once we kind of get to know him at media day and throughout the season, I think Cavs fans really gravitate to him as being kind of a, 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 your fan favorite. Um, the Max Drews thing, here, here's my thing with him. There have been the point of there have been a lot of Miami players that have signed free agent contracts in the past, if you go back 15, 20 years, that have kind of flamed out or have never matched up to their potential when they were with Miami. I mean, there is a list. Sam had wrote about it on, on Hoops Wire about it. Um, and I don't know if it's a curse. I don't know what it is. Uh, I tend to think it's unfair comparison, but I do think there is some validity to it because of that Miami system. And I'm not going to say it's going to happen to Max Struess, 
but I will say that it, it is something to look for. Um, but I think his game in the Cavs system can keep him in check. And when you have other players like Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland and Evan Mobley, I don't think if he struggles, he's going to be as exposed as somebody else would be, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting because he was one of my favorite signings that they, that they, that they made. Um, I guess I'm a little more hype man and optimistic than maybe realist. I know it's a shock to everyone listening and to you guys recording here with me tonight. Um, but uh, you know, he, he's, he's been in big games. He has played and hit big shots when they needed to. Um, and I, I think it's exactly kind of the player that the fans might not know, but mm-hmm. that they say that the team needs. Um, well, Chase, you bring up a great point. And that's that's playoff and NBA Finals experience. He has got mm-hmm. quite a bit of playoff experience, which this team desperately needs. Yeah, And that that pays off. Yeah. And, and two, I think, now go with me here. I think him playing with a player like Jimmy Butler, who is a strong personality, high demanding, um, can take over a game, is very similar to Donovan Mitchell, who can take over a game and can just sheer willpower make things happen. Um, and so I think just that experience with a player like that is also important. He knows how to space. He knows how to do whatever. Um, and so that was one of, like, as I, you know, watched him in the playoffs and finals, like, oh, yeah, yeah, what what a nice piece. I also, Sam, like the re-signing of Levert. I think consistency is key but it also gives the Cavs a little uh playmaker get buckets insurance if Mitchell is injured right someone who you know will just like at least put shots up and can drop 40 on a random night um you know obviously in nowhere near the Mitchell level but you need a playmaker like that if if one of your playmakers goes down and Mitch and Levert can step in that role whether it's foul trouble or uh you know you know heaven forbid he gets injured. Um, not that, you know, it will happen, but it's just, so I think, yes, six man, yes, consistency, but also like he has been that role before. And it's just nice to have that. I think option on the bench, come in second unit, kind of keep, keep being aggressive. And so I, I also like Levert. I think he, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to him in October. Cause I think he had a really interesting year last year. Um, you know, trying to block out whatever noise he was hearing about, oh, the Cavs should trade him. Oh, they should keep him. Oh, he's not good. Oh, he should be on the bench. Oh, he should start. Like, that has to mess with you at some point, just like mentally. I think basketball is a pretty big mental game with confidence and um, not only just in your ability, but in how you carry yourself. And I'm curious to hear how he was able to block that. And because I think it was pretty clear when that shift happened. Um with, with with Levert, I think by the time we got to the playoffs, he was pretty comfortable with with, with his role on the team, and uh, I think it was a big part in them saying, "Yeah, hey, we want you back to do this" because of how he was able to kind of learn how to adapt to his new role and accept that. So I'm curious to hear w- w- what he says here in October about his experience last year, Sam. Is that why you're such a good basketball player, Chase? Because you win at the mental game. Is that what it? Is that why? <laughs> yes. Yes. I will out I mental you on the court. You had a secret. I play 5D um, chess while everyone is still playing Battleship. Man. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Well, wait, I will say <laughs> something like that. Yeah. I think it's close enough. But I, I will say as far as, yeah, I agree with you on Levert. Struess, I, you know, I think they're a little bit, you know, what are we going to get? Which which Struess are the Cavs going to get? And I think we've already covered that. Um, I like the signing, though, or the trade, because it was low risk. You probably were not going to keep Chetty for long anyway. Um, I know a lot of Cavs fans are sad about that. And he he might be very good with the Spurs. Who knows? I, I, I think that he could be pretty good with them. But, gonna be um, good. you know, yeah, I agreed. And then I will say this. Whenever the Cavs played the Sixers, 
the one guy who always, always annoyed me the most was Nyang. Because you knew what Embiid was going to do. You knew what Harden was going to do. You even knew what Tyrese Maxey was going to do. And then all of a sudden, this guy comes in off the bench. And I just remember him three or four games against I'm like, this guy is a Cavs killer. He comes in, hits shots. He hustles. He has a really, as John said, like a fun-loving attitude. Like he just loves the play. He was super annoying. And I think, boy, the Cavs went out and signed that guy. That's That could be very good for him. He's almost, when you th- talk about like energy players, like Lamar Stevens was, I had a scout or GM or somebody, and it wasn't Kobe Altman, but somebody once said, yeah, the Cavs got rid of Lamar Stevens. Nyang plays kind of that physical game a little bit. He's almost like Lamar Stevens with a with a jump shot. So. Uh-oh. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's there's that element of it. So I really, really like the idea of, you know, that that signing. I like Jerome. Um, I'd like to see Sam Merrill. You know, what is he going to do? Is he going to get an opportunity to play uh, because he played so well at summer league and did offer obviously a lot of perimeter shooting? So, by the way, do you guys know where Sam Merrill went to college? Sure, don't. Sable? I'm not gonna look it up. I don't know. Utah State. He was known at Utah State as the Luka Doncic of the Mountain West Conference. Wow, dropping some Mountain <laughs> West knowledge, Sam. <laughs> That's I used to live in Wyoming, so I have to be a big, you know, I'm a big Mountain West fan. Yeah. Well, um, I think universally the Cavs free agents moves have been graded pretty highly. I think them and the Pacers, some of the highest off season free agency grades you'll, you'll find. So uh, a lot of good moves, a lot of exciting moves. Hey, one more thing before we, we sign off here, I want to talk about the 2023 FIBA world cup. And I just want to say this, they better hang a dang rafter from the white house. If USA takes home the gold, I said all the rafters, <laughs> hang them all, all the basketball tournaments yeah. rings, yeah. do it all, do it all. John, are you, are you anti celebratory for the uh, world cup for the FIBA world um, cup as well? Absolutely. Oh, come on. <laughs> USA. We're, Americans. We're Americans. We don't care John's about that. John's least favorite movie is the mighty ducks. He, it's like any like <laughs> anti-tournament. He's just, you should you should hear his rant. He has a whole uh, a whole unpublished episode of the Sable Bros in the baseline about how he. No, I'm just messing. <laughs> but, John you know, Sable mighty... hates Hoosiers. You hate <laughs> Hoosiers, probably. And so <laughs> this is a different. Okay, you're gonna get me going. You're baiting me. All right. First off, I like Hoosiers. I like Mighty Ducks. I will just say the most overrated sports movie of all time, and I will die on this hill. Is Rudy? I cannot stand that movie. Why? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Sam's because, insulted. So, yeah. You know what? We're gonna leave our we're gonna leave our listeners on a cliffhanger because I can go on and on, and we've already been at it long. And Chase wants Chase, to sign off. Here. Chase Smith is the Rudy of Ohio Christian College basketball. So, you know, <laughs> right? I, I, <laughs> I think I I am insulted, but anyway, I just, there there is way better sports movies than Rudy, but yeah, yeah. Mm, boy, that's yeah, that's. That like the garbage kicking, the garbage the kicking, goal kicking Philadelphia phenomenon. That's that is yeah. now that is a sports movie. Tony Danza. Tony Danza. That's right. Wow, I don't wow. know how I knew that. Wow. <laughs> garbage. I don't either. Garbage picking, field goal kicking <laughs> Philadelphia phenomenon. Um, hey, so the FIBA World Cup is going on, and I got to say, we are learning quite a bit about the NBA. Um, from this World Cup. I just want to touch on it because I think it's a great snapshot landscape of where we're at, what players are young and important and the, the felt like that are the kind of like rising well, tide of quick. the new um, NBA. I watched a little um, bit of it. And Shea Gogus Alexander is the best player in the world. Um, there are metrics that, that prove that. He's on Team Canada and is absolutely um, having his – you know, having his way on the court for Team Canada. Right now, Team USA is in the quarterfinals. We play Germany today, Friday, when you're listening to this, Friday evening, and the winner of that will go on to play the winner of Serbia and Canada in the finals on on Sunday. Sam, you watching the FIBA World Cup? Yeah, I've watched a little bit. Um, not a ton, but, like, I'll watch USA, and then and then I'll watch uh, 
like I said, Canada has been fun to watch. Um, I'm hopeful that they'll play each other in the finals. Oh yeah. That's, cool yeah final. I don't, I don't know about Canada. I'm not, I'm not sold on Canada beating Serbia. Um, so, but yeah, I, I Bogdan is pretty terrifying. Let me tell you, right. Sam's scared I of mean, all the it, Sam's scared of Bogdan and all the of bitches. He doesn't know which one they are. It's just all the team of no. bitches. He doesn't he they're gonna team, win. Uh, the entire team of bitches. But they <laughs> they were actually yeah. I mean Canada. Who'd they lose to? They lost to somebody a couple couple games ago that I was surprised they lost that game. So they're not. I will say that we, the, this FIBA World Cup has lost a little muster early on be, only because you're, you're missing big name guys like Giannis isn't playing in it for uh, Greece, and um, there's some big names the United States aren't playing in it. But that's Luca's, okay. Luca's playing in it. He's one of the biggest names in, in, but, NBA, in the world. But Luca's playing in it, and, and Team USA has a lot of young guys mm-hmm. that a lot of maybe casual NBA fans don't know much about and right. you bring up Shea Gildress Alexander uh who's having a phenomenal um tournament yeah and, the best. uh you know Jalen Brunson was playing in it from the Knicks and I don't think he's played that particularly well no but, uh I mean I was Halliburton's in it I believe right he yeah Halliburton well. yeah. obviously um, the best point guard uh in the world uh which Sam we, we we gave him praises when he was with the Pacers and they played and they played the Cavs. Um, Hall- Halliburton yeah. showing out, but this is really yeah. Anthony Edwards' uh, coming out party. He is, um, yeah. I was just going to get to that. Yep. He's, yep. He's, sorry, John. Yeah. Far and away the know. best player. No, okay. Yeah. yeah, for sure. And not only that, but I mean, Austin Reeves is having a pretty solid tournament again. I mean, this yeah. is yeah. showing that he's just not a he's yeah. not a one hit wonder like the people thought he was with the Lakers. If anything, guys. Austin Reeves is showing that he is going to be a third option for the Lakers. It depends yeah. on He really is. That's a big surprise too. <clears throat> but I like this team USA because of that, those type of guys. Yeah. Brandon Ingram, Edwards, you know, Bridges. these are guys who are, yeah, Bridges. These are guys who aren't necessarily surefire all-stars, but they're always going to be on the brink of the all-star game. Got, you know, like I said, Brandon Ingram, Mikel Bridges, Jalen Brunson, Halliburton, uh, obviously Anthony Edwards, as you mentioned, Chase has been having a great tournament. Um, and I'm not, I know that there, there are other guys I forget, but yeah, Austin Reeves has been, been fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's a good experience for them. Your concern of course is, you know, these guys going to be worn out because they're going to go straight from this, get like a week or two off. And then you go straight into, straight into camp. But, you know, I, I broached that to a GM or a scout or somebody who works in the NBA about, you know, these guys get tired. And he's like, no, this is what they do. They're 20 somethings. Yeah. You know, if they, they play basketball and they'll be all right. So I, I, I don't know. But I, I think it's I've enjoyed watching this Team USA for the reasons that I just mentioned that it's not a team of huge names, but but guys who are up and comers. Yeah. Well, I, uh, and, and not only that, but real quick to jump in on that, they lost to Lithuania uh, early yeah. on. They lost, what, 110-104? And that was yeah. a game where they didn't particularly play well down the stretch um, and maybe took some ill-advised shots. But they needed to lose that game to kind of, like, show who they are. And you needed some adversity for this young young team, which is, has very little international experience. Yeah. Um, I know like, it didn't really show uh, – you know, they, they, hey, wow, Team USA basketball lost, but it was early on. It, they're still five and one in this tournament. They can still win the whole thing, and they probably will. Yeah, um, I love the implications. I like Olympic basketball. I get I get pumped to watch Olympic. Um, you know the the tournament there, um, and so this is like a little preview of that. I I, I think this builds confidence with the players, and and I think it's going to matter if it is Team USA versus Team Canada. And it's all these NBA players on the floor going at it. I think that matters. And and I think if if somehow Team Canada wins and SGA is able to kind of strut around, like I think that's going to mean a lot for the, the OKC cloud farts. <laughs> cloud farts. But if but likewise, if USA wins, I think it's going to mean a lot for the Timberwolves and Anthony Edwards. Like I I think yeah, this matters. Sure. I think this I think matters. It, I think it and matters if, for them. 
I don't think it matters for most of Americans. No, but for people who follow the NBA and like the NBA, it's fascinating to watch these players step into this air of confidence and how they carry themselves um, and just growing up right, right in front of us. Um, Plus it's fun basketball. It's fun. Yeah. You have to be, you have to be a, a basketball fan to want to like this tournament because casual sports fans, even casual basketball fans, probably don't know what's going on. And it's every every two years this tournament goes on, the Olympics is not going on. And I remember in the '90s. Sam, correct me if I'm wrong. Some of the the, the '94 team after the Dream Team, so Mark Price was on that team, yeah. was at that time was like the second iteration of dream team two they called it and they went through the whole tournament in in one and then they won gold and then 96 they won gold and so forth but it seemed like probably around early 2000s when they lost the olympics early 2000s or no later when uh like whenever oh, they lost the olympics it was 08 i think 08 when things that was in that was in the bronze that was in like the the brown dock yeah, things took a little yeah. dip, and people then still forgot about this tournament. It's just kind of funny how, you know, if you don't have like the big name, well established names, you think you'd forget about it. You wouldn't forget about it, or you would, or whatever. People then around that same time didn't really know what was going on either. You know, it depends on which country it's in too, because you need to have it in the same time as the American um, in, in Canada uh, time zones. It's just a weird, odd tournament around the olympics that people forget about and they'll casually tune into the summer for this you is the most i've seen about it it was this this year yeah and i i think that's the exposure that it's getting due to uh what espn has the rights i believe so um it's good for the game finally to, to see it like that i think yeah sam do you take much stock in the world cup feeble world cup you mean as far as who wins it yeah I, I think it's a bigger deal if the USA loses. I think that's the I think that's a tournament. Yeah. If the United States loses, then that's news. The same with the you know, same with the Olympics. Right. Then it becomes news. I will say I can appreciate how much it means to the other countries. I mean, their national teams are a big, big deal over there. Yeah. Whether it's Spain or Italy. Or whoever that's that's a big deal the world cup tournament is a big deal internationally because really for guys you know other than like jonas valanchunas and uh, uh, uh donchich and a handful of guys who are in the nba on these other teams this is how to you know this is the chance for all the aviches to see how they stack up against the nba players so yeah i i think it's a cool tournament i understand like i have sports fans friends nba fans friends who are like yeah, we're not watching that. That's just because it's the way it's always been in the United States. But I, I, you know, they get more into it for the Olympics. But I think it's a cool tournament, and I, yeah, I think it's cool. Like for the reasons you gave, Chase. If if let's say Darius Garland was on the team and Team USA won the FIBA World Cup, yeah, they, you know, we'd be talking about it a little bit, yes. um, just as they will in Minnesota if, if you know. The USA wins and Anthony Edwards yeah. is part of it. So, well, I think it's a cool thing, but you know, that, I'm rarer yeah, than that. But for for your point, Sam, if there was a Cavalier on it, I mean, it, it, it's going to almost be a regionalized uh, market interest sure. too, because if you yes. have that. And I will say, to your point about European basketball, I have a brother in law who played professionally in Greece and he knows all about FIBA. And he was telling me a lot of stuff about the you know international teams. And you're right, the, the U- European countries take this very seriously because they look at this as a barometer, something to match up against Team USA. And Team Canada has really blown up over the years. And you mentioned Shea Gilgis Alexander and the players that they've had in the past uh, five years. The Canada basketball has become really, really good. Um, but I mean, this is something that they look up as this is their. They're all their their NBA finals, so to speak, when it's not the Olympics, because they look at this because they're not going to be facing these Americans again for another two years. So those countries take uh, all the attention and focus on it, whereas a lot of Americans don't really care about it because right. you know, it doesn't concern their players. But also, too, they've got to worry about baseball and they've got to worry about football coming up here. Um, so it, it's just 
it is what it is. But it, it, I think if any basketball fan that hasn't watched it should watch it. it they they enjoy it. Yeah. Well, you know who's not on Team Canada for the first time in a long time? R.J. Barrett. He's on Team Canada and he's not been good. No. Um. <clears throat> Andrew Wiggins. You guys. Andrew Wiggins, I don't think is on it either, is he? Dylan no, Brooks. I, former Cavs. Dylan Brooks is on it. Two former Cavs. You have ten Thompson. seconds. Okay, there's one. Um, I don't know. Anthony Bennett. Oh, interesting. Wow. Anthony Bennett could not make Team Canada this year. I don't think Tristan was in, you know, was going to play or was invited or whatever. But I think Anthony Bennett was planning on playing or something and yeah just didn't didn't make the cut well guy. when usa wins we're going streaking through the quad john are you joining absolutely I, let's go sam are you in john, yeah i mean i just i'd streak if Serbia sam's already went. streaking we haven't won yet sam You're stop right. put your clothes back on <laughs> sam, sam. <laughs> <laughs> well this is uh just been so much fun that does it for this episode of calves in the break nba podcast thank you all so much for downloading and listening shouts to the press play podcast network for making this possible make sure to follow us on twitter at calves in the break we always always follow back also shouts to DraftKings. Download right now DraftKings Sportsbook and use code p 3 calves to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting $5. That's code p 3 calves only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. You can follow Sam on Twitter at Amico Hoops. Catch all of his works and writings at HoopsWire.com and at Wire Hoops. You can follow John on Twitter at John underscore Sable. John, what what you got for us tonight, man? What are you thinking? Leave us with any nuggets well, of wisdom. Hmm. It's too yeah, that's what I got. I, I yeah. got I got nothing. Yeah. Sam, final words, my man. See what happens when you ask Sable for wisdom. Oh, oh. Silent. silent. No, I missed you guys. I can't wait to. Uh, I look very much forward to the season. I miss you I both too. more than you'll ever know. We'll be together at media day soon enough, boys. Yes, yeah. we will. I'm going to be recording live there. And we, there's a lot we didn't touch on, guys. There's a lot we didn't touch on. Um, we didn't talk about the new in-season tournament that they've announced. Um, Sam has some awesome articles up on Hoopswire talking about some key games for the Cavs schedule. Uh, the Cavs schedule re- has released uh, a, five primetime games. We didn't talk about that. Um, and so we're going to give some more season outlook here in the coming weeks. Uh, Media Day, October 2nd, we'll be there in person. And it's going to be good stuff. John, Sam, excellent work, you guys. Thank you. It's so good to see you. I missed you all. All right, guys. Well, we will talk to you very soon. And yep. then a lot after that. And then every week after that. John, have a good night, yeah, my boy. Man. You too, guys. Good checking in and uh, looking forward to an exciting season here once it's, it's rolling here in about a month or so. All right. Something I've missed saying. Mike Breen, take us out. Congratulations, Cleveland. Your decades-long wait is finally over. The Cavaliers are NBA champions.